and welcome back. Today we are flying something quite high intensity. It's the Chaika at 2.3. You might ask, why the shit are you flying this thing? And I can stir up some bullshit reason on why that is. But in reality, I just wanted to play with my brain off. And I decided to whip something up from the like 10 or so games that I played. It's going to be mostly short fights. There is going to be some positioning. But in general, it's just low tier carnage. And of course... Because you are in a biplane, you can simply turn fight. Everyone, do be careful when you run into a key 27 or a key 10. Now, most of the time when you run into these, they're probably going to be like level 10. So it doesn't really matter. But these planes can out dogfight you if you aren't careful. The Chaika is actually not the best turning plane in the game. Opposed to contrary belief. So we shit on the SBD real quick. And then we break off and we, well, we notice that everyone is flying away from us. The Firecrest is above us. And then there's another guy right below us. And the real way you fly this thing, honestly, if you don't run into tryhards, it's pretty relaxing. You can kind of just do whatever you want. You aren't very quick, but of course you are a biplane. And this kind of makes up for the fact that you are pretty agile. You know, you still have four wings. They only have two. So... As we are flying around doing absolutely nothing. Thank you to all my Patreons and to everyone looking to buy anything from the Gaijin store. No decal yet, but I have a discount link down below. When the decal is there, I will let you know by a community post. And I'll probably let you know in the description as well. But I'm still waiting. I can't really tell you on any kind of time frame. Because it's completely up to Gaijin. I send them the files. I send them the legal documents and stuff like that. They just need to implement it, but I have no idea how long that's going to take. And with the new patch around the corner, it is likely that it might take a little bit longer than expected. And I just really hope for all you guys that it will come before the patch comes out and not just after. So, what is it about this thing that makes it so easy? Now, the real reason is your stall speed is obnoxiously low. And I mean obnoxiously for the enemies because it's extremely annoying to fight. And it just turns very well. So it doesn't really matter how much energy you have. You can't really stall it out and it's basically always able to pull its, put its guns on you. Which is what makes it so annoying. The SBD below me, really not a threat. So I'm going to use my energy as I still have it to go up and over the firecrest. And I'm simply going to pre-lead into his flight path. He then flies over us and because he lost a lot of speed, I can just pitch up straight into him. And the SBD below us... I mean, let's be honest, he is not going to be doing anything because he is stalled out. And well, it's also an SBD. Now, I promise you, the rest of this gameplay here isn't just me farming SBDs. This is just for the intro and I needed something to talk about my decal, talk about the Patreons. Thank everyone, have a little bit of an introduction. With that out of the way, let's actually start looking at some actual gameplay. So there's a P400 coming in. Not the most dangerous plane you can run into. But we go head on. We don't have to take that. We are much more maneuverable. We are going quite a bit faster than him. So I can just loop up and over. And I'm instantly on a 6. I do bleed a lot of speed doing that. And the main issue with this thing is that it's so damn slow. So if you are against someone that actually knows what they're doing. And someone that actually has a little bit of discipline. It can be extremely frustrating. And the main issue with this thing is that sometimes you're so damn slow. That you can't really pull out of their flight pad. Or like out of the pad of the gun. So you are just kind of flying in place. So you do want to be careful when people start booming zooming you. Especially in like 2v1s. You might turn very well. But when you turn very well going 150 kilometers an hour. They can basically aim directly at your cockpit. And because you are going so slow. They barely have to lead at all. So you just end up eating a lot of bullets. And you don't want that. So it might look like you out turn everyone. And you out turn 95% of the raster. Just be careful, like you might turn very fast, but if you don't go very quickly, and it's the same thing with a circle, you might have a very small circle, but if you draw it very slowly, your pen is barely moving, and that's kind of the analogy I want to use for this biplane here. So be careful, especially in head-ons, try to bank up some speed before you get into it. If you merge into a head-on going 200 kilometers an hour, and most monoplanes will just full commit you, and I can't blame them because you are extremely annoying to fight. You are going to die. So you want to bank up a little bit of speed. Then you want to start looking at some dodges. So we have a beer for the 9. He sees us coming in. And I have a feeling he's going to come in straight for the head on. But instead he goes under us. I thought he was going to dive on the Spitfire. But then he breaks off. 
and he basically gives us the shot. But I notice the FRF coming in. So I'm just going to fly next to him, wait for him to pitch in, but he doesn't. FRU coming in now, so we keep switching targets. FRF, he has gone way too slow, he can't really do anything. And here you see that I'm not really trying to pull into him the doors, I'm just trying to bank up some speed. And then as he starts shooting, just as he starts shooting, preferably just before it, I will start to dodge. This guy is going very slow, but he's still much faster than us. Keep in mind, relatively speaking, these guys go faster in a climb than you do in a straight line. So you really want to be careful with dumping all your speed. So energy management is pretty important in this thing. But it only comes really down to the team fight. One on one, you can basically just keep stalling yourself out as long as you're not fighting something like the uh, P39N or maybe something like the FU1A. Just in general, the really fast undertailed planes. Planes like the 109s, I mean, they're fast enough. But if they don't merge quick enough, by the time they, they're trying to outrun you, you are already 0.2 on their 6. Because you just turn around just like that. So they really need to be careful with merging with you in the head-on. Same goes for you though. You're very slow. You can't really dodge. Same goes for them. But if you get past the head-on, you just press the elevator key and you are instantly on their 6. And then they need to outrun you for like four, 500 meters before you are actually outside of the effective gun range of this thing. And then what? I mean, at the time... They constantly shoot at you. I'm not going to steal that. You can constantly spray at them. As they are trying to increase the distance between you two. But these planes are not quick enough if you have enough entry speed. And here we go. I don't want an F for you. I dodge a little bit too late. And he does hit us. That could have been the end of the video. Or the end of the game I should say. It doesn't instantly kill the video. And we just turn after him. And this is exactly what I mean. I'm instantly on the 6. And he is going to be faster than us. But I can just spray at this guy. And even though this guy is much much quicker... We have pretty high fire rate. We have pretty decent guns. And he plants it into the ground. And then in the background there's a lot of AA shooting at us. But don't you worry. Not this time. We actually aren't going to get hit by AA. We did before uh, the clip started. That's why I was entirely yellow. But we shall ignore that. Because War Thunder is a perfect product by the perfect company called Gaijin. So they would never do such a thing that would hinder gameplay. Right now, I'm just above everyone. I'm looking on who to engage. And I basically always want to pick the highest guy. Unless it's something like uh, FU1A going 3000 bananas a second. I'm not going to dive on that guy. He's way too quick. And it's a complete waste of energy. So I'd rather come and third party him later. But when you see something like, again, a 109E below you. You kind of just dive on him. And he really can't escape you. They need to play it super passive. It's super annoying to fight this thing. In something like a 109 or a Spitfire. Or planes that are relatively slow as well. Because their strength lies in being able to turn well, especially the 109. Being able to turn pretty well and having pretty good engine output. So you can energy fight almost everything. However, and it's the same with Japanese. And that's why the Japanese are so damn strong facing Germany. Especially at like higher tiers when you have the J2M for something like the G2 Trop. There is very little the G2 can do because the, the playstyle of the Japanese kind of hard counters the playstyle of the Germans. If you have a plane that's relatively slow with good climb. And you are flying something that doesn't really care about energy. It's not very fast so you can boom and zoom. But it kind of is a hard counter. And it makes it very very hard for them to actually do anything to you. Now this guy just stalled himself out. So I mean it doesn't matter what plane he was. He would have died regardless. And right now I'm just trying to look around. I'm trying to see if they are diving away. I'm trying to see... If they're not doing anything fancy. Because I don't want to throw away my speed and my altitude. I need to conserve my calories. Otherwise I will go underweight very very quickly. So I'm trying to cut this guy off. I'm going back into a dive. And I will catch this guy pretty handily. It's a 109F. Now that's a little bit more dangerous than a 109E in this thing. Because it's actually quicker. Energy retention is a lot better as well. And I'm just trying to reel him in as he's busy with the 109. 190, same story. Now this 190... Is completely oblivious to the fact that I'm reeling him in real fast. Because he's very oblivious. He's going a bit to the right. If he had just turned to the left a little bit. Easily would have outrun me. Look at me. I'm going 410. And I'm dropping extremely quickly. I recommend him to watch the 190A1 video that I made like two days ago. Maybe that helps him out a little bit. Now sir the subject was about flap usage. And I will make a tutorial about flaps itself. So that's why I brought it up. I will start on that video. I can't promise you any time. Because those are pretty time intensive. And I don't have much of that right now. So I want to kind of slowly build on the gameplay. Work on that in the meantime. I'm not going to promise anything. Because I suck at 
keeping my promises, so I'm just not gonna make any from the get-go. Once I start it, once I start getting a little bit of a time frame, I will let you know. But until then, just stay tuned, it will come. And to announce that, I will fly this plane that doesn't actually have flaps. How convenient. So, we have a 1 and 9 coming in, and there's also a guy coming in from my left. So I want to kill this guy very, very quickly, because I actually do not like being stuck in a 2v1 in this thing. Because it's very hard for you to dodge the second dude, because you are simply going so damn slow. This guy tries to go vertical, doesn't work, I'm in the Chaika. Then we turn in, we try to go below, pick up some speed, and then once we picked up some speed, we simply push up and pull up over his guns. Wait for him to fly in front of us, we instantly reverse him. Now the A6, or A5 M4, really not an issue, instantly goes down. And we are going to look for our next victim. We have a J11 below us. Now we're just going to go head on with him. Don't have to commit. We have a much stronger plane in this position. I mean the J11 isn't very good to begin with. But in general. When you're going faster than someone in the biplane. Just do whatever you need to do. To not go into their guns. And if you do that. You will win. Trust me. Unless of course you're finding something like a Tomcat. But I doubt you're going quicker than that thing. And you probably wouldn't be running into many of those anyway. So we have a Junker 87 above us. It's a D variant. And I'm saying that like it actually matters. I mean it's a goddamn Stuka. He is going to do exactly nothing to us. But I'm just waiting for him to make a move. Because I have a feeling he wants to go fighter mode. But I also have a feeling that he doesn't really know how to engage us. And I can't blame him. I mean he's in a goddamn Stuka. We are in a Chaika. And the main deficit of the Chaika is of course the top speed. The Stuka isn't exactly quick either. So he really can't do much to us. So I'm just going to start pitching up for him. I do want to be careful of the gunner. The gunner here is definitely his main trap. So I'm going to try to climb under him. And just kind of pitch up. I don't want to go below or above his tail at any point of this fight. Because that gunner can very easily be a one shot ticket straight back to the hangar. And I like when I'm the one that shoots them back to the hangar. I'm not a fan when it happens like this. Now he's going to outrun us. I'm just going to try to spray at him. I'm trying to just get a kill on the gunner. I'm trying to just get some hits in. Maybe he starts the turn. Maybe I get something out of it. So I'm just going for some long range shots. I'm just trying to shoot center mass. I'm not trying to shoot at anything particularly. But I'm trying to get a kill on the gunner. So I'm just going to spray in the center of the plane. And maybe I get lucky. One round goes through the glass. I know your stream didn't just close on Discord. That is me closing the stream. I was streaming for Hazy. That's what you just heard. I had to tab out because my uh, game was kind of uh, spazzing out. There we go. It's back up. And now we are going to dive on the 109. Or dive in front of him. Trying to cool the engine down because I won't go much quicker anyway. Last second I will put the weapon. And then we do the same thing. We dodge the head on. And look how... It's pretty damn close. Like we turn very very well. But it's not very hard for him to get guns on us. It's very hard to predict the flight path. But once you get that aim down, it's very easy to kill a biplane in the merge when he's not going super quick. We get past the merge, however, and because we were going so quickly, well, we make very short work of him. We instantly turn after him, and he dies right on the spot. So now we are actually going to start climbing again. We want to get a little bit of altitude back, because I'm feeling a little bit hungry at the moment, and I'm going to need some more calories. So we look around, and I'm really wondering... Who there is to engage. I'm waiting for someone else from the runway. But it's just a Stuka. And some other random guy. Where could he be? We have no idea. Which is kind of the issue here. So I'm just going to be climbing. Keep looking around. Stay vigilant. And these are the clips I normally kind of cut out. But I know there's a guy on the runway. <laughs> well not anymore. Stuka goes down. And now I need to look for the last guy. I have no idea where he could be. And then a little bit later the Donye 17 pops up. And this is a guy that actually likes to play this thing. He's a low tier enjoyer so to speak. Definitely not a low level. And that's why I'm going to fly it like this. I'm going to be pretty kind of passive aggressive in a sense. I want to bait him on my 6. I want to make him feel secure about himself. And I just want him to commit to these dives. Because he compresses pretty badly. And when you're going down and you're compressing. You're actually going to lose a lot of energy. Because if you are stuck going downwards and you go past your top speed, if you start pitching up again, you're going to burn a lot of that speed really, really quickly. So, he does exactly that. 
We're gonna do the same thing. I'm trying to pick up some speed here by diving. And I want to fool him into trying to do an after us. Because then I can instantly shoot him. He doesn't fall for it, however. So we're gonna pitch up before we are out of energy. So we shoot a little bit at him. We get an oil leak. And we simply break over. But again, I don't want to deal with those gunners. But I like to just dive out in these situations. Because it kind of invites him to try and pitch down on me. And cut inside of my flight pad. And he, again, almost does it. But then he notices and he just breaks off again. Notice that gunner. I'm just trying to get that gunner kill in. I'm just trying to shoot the fuselage really. And once I kill the fuselage. Or once I kill the gunners. It's very easy for me to just kind of park on this 6. And try to shoot the engines down. At this point you can tell I'm trying to shoot at the engines. I shoot one of them. Gunner is unconscious. I have 83 rounds. But at that point I see that the fire is spreading. And he is completely toasted. He's going to burn up rather nicely. 40 rounds left. But I don't actually need them. He's going to burn up. That is game one. On to the last clip. PBM. I am going to dive on him. Main reason. I just want to get an oil leak in. If I get a kill. That's fantastic. But I'm just trying to do something to it. So I don't have to chase him around. In the late game. And I do this very often versus bombers. And with a biplane. I noticed everyone was above me anyway. So I might as well sacrifice a little bit of altitude. To make sure that I do not, don't have to deal with a bomber in space. In the late game. I-16 coming in. The CW-21 is definitely my main threat here. We just dodge him. We then dodge the P-40. We go up and over his nose. And I'm just looking around. The I-16 takes priority here. Because if I go for the P-40 here. I'm going to set myself up for a disaster. For the next guy. We turn in. Hold the trigger down. Get a bunch of hits in. And we just instantly finish the deal. Because I don't want to deal with him. And then I lose the P40. Because he went in a very weird direction. But he's already catching us. Despite him actually having turned more than we did. But of course he's much quicker. And he loses less speed. Because he turns much less tight. So we go under him. And there's the guy I was initially worried about. It's the CW21. And I will put all my might into trying to kill this guy. And I don't really mind if I die to the P40. I just want the CW1 to be dead. CW21 to be that Because he can actually kill my team very easily. Whereas a P40 isn't exactly the best plane. And because of the map design of this map is absolutely fantastic. Because again, Gaijin, perfect company. Because of the spawns on this map, which are pretty far apart. And the airfield being very far in front of our spawn. It makes it so that the middle of the map or the middle of the fighting area in most BRs. Basically ends up being directly above the airfield. Which is super annoying on both sides. Because if you're trying to fight someone. They all break off because you are near the AA. And I, I can't blame them for that. Definitely not an issue. And the second part is. You start engaging people. And they notice. Oh I'm right next to the airfield. I'm just going to die for it. So I hate it either way. I either can't kill people. Because they die to AA. Maybe the, I can't kill people because they don't want to engage me when I'm near it. Because they expect me to dive towards the airfield. Which is understandable because almost everyone does it. And when you're fighting it, I mean, it's just super annoying. Because every time you get the upper hand on someone. Or sometimes you don't even need to have the upper hand. They're simply going to dive straight to the airfield. I'm going to dive in here. I was going to focus on the P-29. Luckily the Junker at 288. Not the 288 luckily. Wouldn't that just be fantastic at 3.3? And no guys, I'm not serious. Please don't add it. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all very soon.